Hi everyone, my name is Jonathan Pan, technical evangelist for Bixby. Be sure to follow me on Twitter at John Without the H. Today's video, we're going to be going over the fourth part of the Bixby capsule approval process, frequent rejections, the UI, and UX. The first thing I'm going to go over is the dialogue and how dialogue can get you rejected. The first one is don't use the default. Here's what I found. As an example, Let's say your capsule finds GIFs for the user and it, assuming that it searches for something. Here's what I found. All it says is here's what I found. Another example of a default dialog for an input view instead of a result view would be this. I need a name to continue. So whether it's the default dialog for a result view, which is here's what I found, or a default dialog for an input view, we strongly recommend not to use these, and we have rejected capsules in the past for using these too often. The next way your capsule can be rejected because of its dialog is if you try to introduce it as another voice assistant. Now, it is important for Bixby to be Bixby and not Siri or any other voice assistant. So that also applies to, let's say, some voice assistant persona that you might have created. So let's say we search for a GIF. Here's what I found. Hi, I'm Annie, your personal GIF finder. Here is Charlie Brown dancing GIF by Peanuts. And here you can see that the capsule introduced itself as Annie, your personal GIF finder. So this would be a rejection under this current rule. The next one is don't read something else not in the dialog. I'm not reading the stuff in the dialog section right now. This is a fail. So this here is the dialog section, typically done through the message or the dialog files. And if your capsule is reading something that's not here, or let's say you put Charlie Brown Dancing GIF by Peanuts, and it's reading something else entirely, your capsule needs to read what's in this area, or else it'll be a fail. The fourth don't is don't repeat the dialog in the view. Here is cat massaging GIF. Now the dialogue is not violating the previous three don'ts. However, down here you can see that the dialogue is also placed inside the view. Now, if you repeat the dialogue like this inside the view in two places, then this creates a poor user experience to see the same message twice in such a short span. So simply put, don't repeat the dialogue right here inside the view itself. So the next don't is don't put short dialogues in the view and not put them in the dialogue section. Here is cat massaging GIF. So here you can see how the dialogue is very short, which is just here is cat massaging GIF, and I placed it inside the view. In this case, you do not want to place it inside the view, and you want to keep a short dialogue up in the dialogue section right there. And of course, the opposite applies as well. Don't put really long dialogues in the dialog. The graphics interchange format is a bitmap image format on the World Wide Web due to its wide support and portability between many. As you can see, this dialog is far too long for a reasonable user experience inside the dialog section of the view. So instead of doing it that way, you should put extremely long dialogues inside the view itself. The graphics interchange the online form. services provide. And now here you can see that despite Bixby's reading this very long form answer, here it is far more visually digestible inside of the view instead of inside the dialogue section. So moving on, for tappable components, tappable components in Bixby have a light box around them. So here you can see the slight color difference between the background for this component and the lack of a light box background for the rest of the view right here. Now it is very important for any component with a light box around it to be tappable. Now if the component with a light box around it is not tappable, this will fail your capsule. So here is a tappable UI example of what would be a fail and what would not be a fail. In this case, I'm using a split cell for UI purposes to show who is uploaded by and where the source is from. However, because these have light boxes around them and therefore indicate that they should be tappable and you can't tap them to do anything, then this is considered a fail. You should use light boxes 
in the situation where tapping on them would do some kind of action. For example, so here you can see that these cell cards do have a light box around them, and clicking on them would do something in the capsule. Welcome to Quizlet. Let's start a quiz. Select a category. So you can see that after I tapped on it, it started a new game. The next common fail point in UI UX is when people try to punch out of their capsules. Punch outs should be used sparingly and only to finish processes that normally can't be done in Bixby. One example of using a proper punch out is to provide insurance quotes or something like that. In most situations, let's say you are providing a link to where you got your information from, that is a good time to use an attribution link. However, you should not be using other components as attribution links. So I'll give you one example. This UI element here would be an example of a fail for punching out to just the simple Jiffy link. However, this one right here, an attribution link, is commonly used to punch out into the browser or to just provide a link uh, that the user can you know, navigate to. So here you can see clicking on that attribution link opens the link to Jiffy and that is acceptable. So the moral of the story for this is to use the proper UI component for punching out when providing attribution or credit to something. And that component is the attribution link. Don't use other normal tappable components to do something like this. And now the last thing is that list views and input views must always work with voice. Here's one example. If we type in our name right here, your name is John, it works just fine. However, if we try to speak it into Bixby, John. I need a name to continue. You'll see that this form just does not work. In order to fix that, you can just use a prompt for training. Like this. I need a name to continue. And now I should accept my name as a name. Jonathan. Your name is Jonathan. There you go. Very quick and easy fix. Now you will notice that from earlier, I need a name to continue. The dialogue is the default dialogue, and it exposes a variable name as well, which is name. Now, of course, uh, that's not immediately obvious to the user, but that could fail your capsule. So I would recommend using a custom message or dialogue like that. What is your name? So that it would actually ask you uh, the proper question here. What is your name? Now, do keep in mind that Bixby is a voice first experience. So you do need to make sure that it works with voice, in, with voice inputs. Now voice also must work for list views and result views as well. So you can see here that we have a list of GIFs. However, the user should be able to select a GIF with their voice. The first one. Cat massaging GIF. It was uploaded July 30th, 2013. The second one. On my way goodbye GIF by Bubblepunk. Now, one of the flags that helps with that is this flag right here, use input views for selection list detail. And of course, there are exceptions to this rule as well. Uh, some types of forms like checkboxes, multi-line forms, and some various other ones are very difficult to use voice with and are actually meant to be tappable or something else. In those rare exceptions, those specific input views don't necessarily need to work with voice. However, for most input views and for your list result views, make sure that they work with voice and that you can select an item with your voice. This video summarized most of the common rejection reasons for your UI and UX. And I hope that this four part series helped you both improve your capsule and also help get your capsule approved. We look forward to seeing your capsule on the marketplace and thank you very much for watching.